Hi guys, it's Beamer Zen with another video and today I am changing flex disc and drive shaft center support bearing on my Z4 E85 BMW. My Z4 is now 16 years old and it already has 290,000 kilometers on the clock, so that's quite a lot. And uh, a lot of components, they do wear down and they need to be replaced, especially the plastic bushings and bearings. So, last time when I was underneath the car, I inspected the drive shaft and I did notice that my flex disc was beginning to go bad. It has a lot of cracks, I will show you that later. And I also am getting a little bit of clunking noises from the transmission and the drive shaft when I'm shifting the gear. So there's something going on and I suspect it's the drive shaft central support bearing. They do go bad on BMWs, so we will be replacing them. The flex disc basically connects transmission with the drive shaft and uh, this kind of smooths out jerk or uh, vibrations coming from the engine. This is like a damping device. And then you also have the central support bearing. This comes uh, between the front and the rear part of the drive shaft. And it is also made out of rubber bushing and the bearing. So this bearing here sits inside this uh, rubber bushing and it kind of flexes a little bit. And that also prevents vibrations from coming into your cabin and makes the driving a bit smoother. But after a while, of course, these components wear down and uh, so I've bought the complete set. You can buy together with the bearing and the bracket and you can also only get the bearing, but I advise you to just get the whole part and don't bother just replacing the bearing because after a while this rubber gets brittle and it cracks and uh, it's just a lot of work to get this replaced, so it's not worth it. So. To replace both of these components, you need to jack up the car, put it on jack stands. Now, if you have a lift like I do, you will, of course, uh, lift the car up as far as it goes. And then we will have to remove a couple of splash plates and covers and reinforcements. And we will also have to drop exhaust. And this is probably the, the trickiest part because manifold and exhaust bolts are probably really really rusted so you will probably have to break them or heat them up to release them so uh, make sure that you have all the spare parts available if you need to replace them you will need some special tools to get this job done i will show you what they are but it's nothing too complicated you can buy it or even make it yeah so this is the diy and uh, let's go here we go again Mm -mm. Contact. After you raise the car, you first have to remove this aluminium splash shield. It is connected with a couple of uh, eight millimeter screws. So they are all around. You just go and remove them all and remove the shield. Then you have to remove this reinforcement plate you have to remove four 16 millimeter bolts here, here at the front and here. And then you also have to remove 13 millimeter nuts here for the exhaust mounts and also another pair of 13 millimeter bolts here and here. Then you will also have to remove this reinforcement bar and you can see it is connected with two 16 millimeter bolts here and here and there's also 13 millimeter nut here at the top and let me see if i can show you so it's up there 
and uh, you have to remove this because you will also have to remove the exhaust and this is in a way. Now it's time to finally remove the exhaust. So you have to remove two 13 millimeter nuts over there at the back. So you have one there and one there and there are two more here. So you have to remove those two and this will release the back of the exhaust and here the front you have to remove four nuts so here 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 and here now you will see that uh, my bolts are nice and shiny that's because this is the video from the future and uh, when i was first removing the exhaust I've uh, of course broken off the original nuts and then I had some problems removing it but you will see more of that later but if you are removing your nuts and they're rusty you can try and clean as much as you can and uh, use some WD-40 and maybe use some heat and try to just loosen the nuts slowly otherwise you will definitely break them and because they are originally stud bolts you will have to punch the old stud bolts out and that's really really hard to do so later in the video you will see how i did that but anyway you have to remove four bolts and then you can take out the exhaust okay i finally have the exhaust removed but unfortunately all four bolts broke they are quite badly rusted so there wasn't much i could do and bmw uses stud bolts and they are out of special material that uh, takes the heat cycles very well but unfortunately still rusts so they are very hard to remove i finally managed to remove three of the four stud bolts as you can see they have grooves and the grooves slot into the manifold flange and that prevents the bolts from coming loose but unfortunately after a while they get rusty and they get stuck in there pretty hard so it's very very hard to remove them so i first tried and i've hit the stud bolts with hammer but that's not a very good idea because you can damage the catalytic converter so i stopped that and then i tried using this blowtorch on uh, propane so i've tried and heat up the stud bolts and then i also used some wax and the theory is that the wax gets between the threads and uh, loosens the bolt i don't know how well that worked uh, i definitely could not get the stud bolts out just using that method and then uh, my father finally helped me and uh, made this tool for me so this is a sort of a extractor as you can see it's quite strong and uh, this is what finally enabled me to remove the stud bolt so as you can see there's a bolt here and this goes underneath the flange so you just put it like this and then you press out the stud bolt and uh, this was the only successful method so far so uh, as i said before i've already removed three of the stud bolts this is the last one and i'm going to show you how this tool works as you can see the bolt has a hole inside so the stud bolt fits right in so it doesn't slide out and then all i have to do is position the tool and start tightening down the bolt so i have to make sure that the back side of the stud bolt fits into the hole on the back of the tool and then i can just press out the stud bolt uh, 
I'm going to use a little bit of WD-40. And now I can hopefully just press out the stud. Yeah, it goes. Okay, I think we have the stud bolt out. Okay. So as you can see, this tool is uh, quite effective and unfortunately you will probably have to make a tool like this or buy something similar uh, in order to remove the stud bolts or maybe use a proper blowtorch and heat everything up but that's quite complicated so uh, yeah they are uh, very very hard to remove i'm going to use standard bolts 40 millimeters long, M10, and uh, I hope that will work. So if they rust out, I will just cut them and it will be much easier to remove them because they're not stud bolts like this. Then we have to remove this splash cover here underneath and it is connected with a couple of eight millimeter screws. So one is here and uh, a couple of them here and here. Here in the front there are a couple of uh, nuts, there is a plastic one here and there's a metal one here on the other side. You have to remove that and then you can remove the whole splash cover. With the splash plate removed we can see the drive shaft and central support bearing here that we will replace and at the front we can see the flex disc connecting the drive shaft with the transmission. There are six bolts you have to remove. I've already removed four of the bolts from the drive shaft and uh, they are 16 millimeter. So you have to have a flat wrench and go behind and grab the nut from behind. And here you can just use a normal wrench or a socket and remove the bolt. But before you do that, make sure that you mark your position so uh, I've made the mark here on the drive shaft and I'm going to make a mark here on the transmission flange. So when I put everything back together, I will make sure that everything is aligned as it was because we don't want to introduce any imbalances into the drive shaft. You can reach the nut from behind and just uh, unscrew it Now we have the flexible disc loosened, but we still have to remove the drive shaft so we can get the disc out. To do that, we have to drop this central support bearing on the drive shaft. And uh, so you have to remove a couple of 13 millimeter bolts here and here and just drop it. But before you do that, make sure that you mark the position of your drive shaft so you have to make a mark so you can put it in the same orientation when you put it back together because the drive shaft is balanced and uh, if you disturb the balance you can introduce some vibration and noises into the drive system and that's of course not okay. So I'll take my marker and make a mark and also, I'm going to make a mark here. But since there are a couple of splines, I will make sure that I will align this spline with this mark here. Now that we have the drive shaft marked, we can remove the 13 millimeter bolts. 
And when you do that, make sure that you support the center bearing so it doesn't just drop. I'm going to try and be careful. Since I have my car lift support bar here, I am expecting the drive shaft to just slowly drop onto here. So I don't need to be uh, too concerned, but if you're doing this on drag stands or if you are doing this on a proper two post lift, uh, just make sure that you have somebody uh, to support it. Okay. If I look at the bearing, I can already feel and see that it is totally worn. I don't know if you can hear that, but there are noises and there is plenty of play in the bearing. So this bearing definitely needs a replacement. Oh yeah, this is, this is bad. With the center bearing dropped, we can now pull out the drive shaft and here you can see that the flex disc is already loosened. I am going to move the drive shaft just a little bit so I can gain some uh, space. So this requires some uh, wiggling. Okay. Here you can see that there is a centering on the drive flange of the transmission. So this slots into the drive shaft. And here you can see that there is a bearing or a bushing here that slides onto that pin. And this is what keeps the drive shaft centered. It's a good idea to replace this. There is a replacement part, but I don't have it. So I'm just going to reuse the old one. I'm going to clean it out, uh, put some grease in there and uh, reuse it. With the drive shaft slightly bent, I can gain some space and finally remove the flex disc. Oopsie. And uh, the flex disc is out. As you can see, yeah, this flex disc is worn and torn and it's time to replace it. Now we have to separate the two parts of the drive shaft. And as you can see, there are uh, splines here where you can just slide out the front part of this drive shaft. But before I do that, I've uh, used the original bolt and I've screwed it back into the chassis and uh, I've used a piece of wire to hang the back side of the drive shaft. This will prevent the drive shaft uh, from falling too low and potentially damaging the joint on the rear of the drive shaft. And uh, yeah, now all I have to do is pull this piece out. And it's uh, out. Now we have to remove this uh, metal clamp and take out the central support bearing. To get the central bearing of the shaft, we need to use a puller or a bearing removal tool. So if you have a long puller like this, you can use it to grab around the aluminium console and just pull it from the shaft. Now my puller is not long enough, so uh, I cannot use it. That's why I've made my own tool out of some threaded rod and uh, profile steel. So as you can see, I have cut out here and this will grab around the bearing. And here is my surface where the shaft rests and I can then pull the bearing with the help of the nuts on the threaded rods and uh, this should work just fine. You can also use a bearing removal tool. I will put the link down in description so you can find it if you need to buy it.
Okay, I have my tool set up and now I can start tightening the nuts and this will pull the bearing out of the shaft. Here it goes. So as you can see the tool grabs around the bearing and it pulls it off. If you use a normal puller that grabs by the bracket it might uh, just destroy this rubber insert that holds the bearing. But uh, if you don't plan to reuse this bracket and just plan to remove the bearing then you should definitely use a tool like this that grabs around the race of the bearing and that should pull it out nicely so here is our bearing now when you take it off you don't really feel that much play but when the bearing is on the shaft you can definitely feel that it's totally worn out and it's quite bad so we have our bearing out, now we have to put in the new one. Ok, let's quickly inspect the old parts. So I've already pressed out the bearing and uh, yeah, I can feel it running very poorly. So this needs to be replaced and the rubber bushing itself, it is starting to show a little bit of cracking and yeah, this uh, definitely needs to be replaced as well, just because it's very hard to replace it later. And then we have, of course, our flex disc. It's also quite badly worn and it has a lot of cracks here. So this one is bad. If you see cracks like this, then you know it's time to replace it. The new parts, I've chosen Fabi Bilstein because they are a good quality German brand and the replacement parts are usually very good. So this is the new central support bearing. As you can see it comes as one piece so you just have to remove the old piece and put the new part in. And of course it runs very nice and without any noises. And then here is the new flex disc also from Fabi Bilstein and yeah no cracks here and nice and straight and this should improve the handling qualities of the car. So let's install this. I am going to clean the surface so the new bearing slides in easier. When installing back this bearing bracket, make sure that this flange part is pointed towards the front of the car and the flat spot is pointed towards the back. So it goes in like this. To get the new central support bearing in, we have to use a piece of pipe and this pipe has to be long enough and it has to fit over the splines. So as you can see, I have a piece of metal pipe with aluminium adapter. The inner ID is 31 millimeters and the shaft is 30 millimeters. So it slides freely and I can then hit the bearing on the inner race. So I don't damage the rest of the bearing. So as you can see, this fits perfectly over the bearing and over the shaft and this will enable me to just tap the new bearing in. I will go all around until I can feel that the bearing is in its position. You don't have to tap the bearing too hard, you don't want to damage the universal joint here. So you should feel it move. It has to be snug, but not too snug. Let's check our progress. I think that the bearing 
is almost in. I think this is it. Now it's time to check if the bearing is correctly installed. You should see a groove there and in that groove fits the pressure clamp and if you inspect it closely you can see that the teeth on the clamp are bent up so when you are putting this back you have to make sure that it is uh, oriented correctly so it has to go this way so these teeth they put some pressure on the inner race of the bearing and that way this bearing stays into correct position so first i'm going to try and just put the clamp on and then after it fits if it fits i will put some grease there and install it permanently okay as you can probably see this clamp fits perfectly so it's ready to be installed i'm going to take it out and now put some grease in there that should prevent some future corrosion we're done with the center support bearing now i'm going to put some grease on the splines just go all around and make sure that all the splines are nicely touched by the grease I've also cleaned and greased the rubber bushing where the centering is. So there is a pin on the transmission flange that slots here and it centers the drive shaft. And over this comes the flexible disc. Now we have to join the two parts together. Again, make sure that you match the markings on the both parts so they slot in the same way. Otherwise you can have some issues with vibrations and stuff. So I'm going to try and find the correct spline. You will probably have to wiggle it a little bit. I am using this tool again and I am sliding it over this flange and then I just slightly tap on the drive shaft and I can feel it moving into the splines. Okay, I almost have the drive shaft in. I don't want to tap it too far because it's easier to tap it in than pull it out. So I'm going to move to the front and install the flex disc. Okay, it's time to install the flex disc. As you can see, it has thick parts and thin parts. That is important because the engine rotates clockwise like this and the power goes through the transmission coming out of the flange and it has to be connected to this bolt here and then it pushes this bolt here so make sure that the thick part is between the drive flange and the drive shaft and that will uh, make sure that everything runs nicely if you do it the other way around you can get some sloppy acceleration and jerk so that's no good make sure you install it correctly we first have to put the disc onto the drive shaft. Okay. And then we have to push the drive shaft onto the centering pin on the transmission. Make sure that the driving pin is nice and clean before installing the shaft.
Okay, I think I have the pin inserted. Now I can put back the bolts for the center support bearing. First just hand tight. And the second one. Okay, now I can remove the holding wire. And finally, I'll have to torque it to 21 Newton meters. And the central support bearing is now nice and secured. Since I still have some gap between the drive flange and the drive shaft, I'm using just a normal C clamp. This is 75 millimeter clamp to close the gap between the both parts and this should work very well i did tap the front part of the drive shaft just a little bit too far in and i have to pull it together now and i think this should be enough okay now we have to tighten down the bolts there are different specs for torquing the bolts depending on type of bolts used so i have 10.9 m10 bolts so i have to tighten them down to 64 newton meters but if you have different bolts uh, you have to use different torques and i'm going to put uh, the specs down in description so you can know what kind of torque to use so again i have 10.9 so i have to tighten them down to 64 newton meters okay i have all the bolts torqued down and we're done with the flex disc Next we have to put back this splash cover underneath the drive shaft. Don't forget there are a couple of uh, 10 millimeter nuts. This is a plastic one. That one there is metal. And you have to tuck the cover underneath this plastic cover here and underneath that cover. Now it's time to put back the exhaust. Okay, the exhaust is back on. At the front you can see new bolts. I've decided to put back just the normal bolts and uh, they are 40 millimeter long together with some washers and uh, nuts. Don't forget to put back the braces here. So this holds the other pipe. There's one here and one at the top. Uh, I've decided to go with this uh, instead of the original BMW bolts for now. If they get loose or they break or something, I will replace them later. It's not a critical failure. I can deal with that in any time. So uh, yeah, this is the final product of uh, this uh, stupid stud bolts. At the back, you have to put back two rubber bushings. They are bolted down with two 13 millimeter nuts here and also here and that will hold the back side of your exhaust. Then we have to put back this reinforcement plate and also this reinforcement strut. So uh, the 13 millimeter bolts and nuts have to be tightened down to 21 newton meters. And the 16 millimeter bolts, they have to be tightened down to 59 Newton meters plus 90 degrees of rotation. The manual also says you have to replace the bolts. I didn't replace the bolts. Uh, I've just uh, tightened them down to 59 Newton meters and then I did 45 degrees of rotation. I think that that is plenty enough. I think that if you go all the way to 90, yeah, that's a bit too much for my taste. I will let you decide what to do on your own car. This is just uh, what I'm comfortable with. And also this 16 millimeter bolt on the support strut is uh, the same 59 Newton meters and uh, 90 degrees. And the nut here at the top is 
24 newton meters. All we have to do now is uh, put back the splash shield and we're done. Okay, the splash shield is up. Uh, start with the center bolt so the whole plate is secure and then you go all around and tighten down the screws. Be careful, don't tighten them down too hard. They are very easy to spin and destroy the thread, so uh, don't go too hard. Okay, we're done. Time to lower the car and uh, take it for a spin. I'm just back from the test drive. Everything went smoothly. I have no vibrations or noises. So uh, I'm going to call this one a success. So uh, thanks for watching and remember, keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.